الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله a question was asked by a, a brother and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him regarding hijrah and I'll be as brief as I can and if we need more details maybe we'll ask one of the scholars but just general this is from the bab of it, uh, advice and not as a, uh, uh, a fatwa as we are not uh, it is not permissible for me to make fatwa as I am just a Tawaylib, a small student of knowledge, and even in fact, that is perhaps raising me beyond my status, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, and may Allah forgive us of our sins. The brother said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And he just mentioned a few things. He mentions that he lives uh, in a particular locality in America, and from the things that he's faced with, of course, are the temptations of women because he lives in a very hot climate where it is uh, well known for partying and well known for fitna, the fitna of the women, as we mentioned. Uh, that, uh, and the Prophet ﷺ said, Fitna awal fitna bani Israel kana fi nisa. The first fitna trial of the children of Israel was the women. Meaning that we're tested as men with women. This is one of the most difficult things for most of us. Some of us it could be wealth. He also mentioned that uh, the difficulty of the materialism, of indulging in the materialism and desires in his, uh, in that uh, locality, that, that is also a big fitna for him. And also uh, with regards to his religion, that there's a lot of widespread bid'ah and kufr and misguidance. Uh, due to people's poor understanding of the religion and the imams in his locality with poor understanding of the religion. He also said there's no pious, uh, there's no scholar, and I'm assuming he means a uh, student of knowledge or, or a scholar there that has sound, trustworthy Islamic knowledge, he mentioned. Uh, he said his friends and family uh, also oppose him in the way he tries to practice his Islam. Uh, and he has no close friends. His family believes that he is insane or afflicted with a jinn. Uh, and that he is suffering psychologically from their, uh, their, their difficulty that they put upon him, the pressures. He said, also he fears for his religion in general. And that he is 17 years old. His main... Uh, question, it coming to the main question, a part of his question, he said he's 17, he wants to make hijrah, he wants to leave, and uh, he wants to go to a Muslim land with the idea of getting married to a sister in Islam who lives in any of the places uh, that can help him practice his religion. Uh, and he hopes that to find a situation where a sister can give him residency. So I will mention now, Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. No doubt the hijrah is, uh, is preferred and recommended to leave uh, the land of disbelief to the land of belief. To leave the land of shirk to the land of tawheed. To leave the land of kufr to the land of iman. To leave the land of bid'ah to the land of sunnah. All of these are a part of hijrah, as far as the physical hijrah of the land. Then there's also the hijrah of, of course, uh, leaving the ma'asi, as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wa sallam mentioned in an authentic hadith, that uh, the best hijrah, or a type of hijrah, is leaving off uh, the sinfulness. That this is a type of hijrah, hijrah from your ma'asi, hijrah from the pornography, hijrah from the nightclubs, hijrah from the alcohol, hijrah from the bad people and the bad gatherings, and the gatherings of... Uh, Bidah, or the hijra from the gatherings of sinfulness. These are also types of hijra. In the situation, your particular situation, my advice in general is that for number one, that you should not uh, depend upon a woman for uh, your hijra. And I say this because number one, 
that the women, that the men are the maintainers and protectors of the women. So you want to generally have yourself in a position of power in the sense of your economic power as she will respect you as the man of the household more if you are not in need of her. You're needing her for this, you're needing her for this, and that you're providing for her. Uh, number two, I don't know of anyone who would give their daughters to someone who is unknown. So with you being asking a question and being unknown, not just to me, but to uh, families in various uh, people around the world, people are not willing to, <coughs> in a Muslim and in non-Muslim environments generally, to give their daughters uh, for, to someone in marriage who, who is unknown to them. Uh, you know, who's, who's not known, and not just knowing their name and a little bit about them, but, you know, knowing something of their background, knowing uh, issues of whether they're sane or not, knowing issues of how they practice and what their uh, menhaj, their methodology of practice is, what they understand of the deen, who they take their knowledge from. All of these kind of things are important. Are they a person of straightness? And also for many families is also economics. Is this person... Uh, uh, do they have the economic uh, means to take care of my daughter? So there are many, many uh, aspects there. So my advice would be, number one, finish, if you haven't finished your high school, finish your school. Number two, uh, you know, under the authority of your parents. Number two, try to do your best, respect your parents as much as possible. Uh, respect them, show kindness and gentleness with them, and uh, uh, share share with them in the best of manners your uh, you know Islamic mannerisms because often what we find if you're 17 years old and you've embraced the deen uh, uh, more than often you do not understand many issues and have wisdom with regards to how to practice the deen and I'll give you an example my personal example when I became Muslim in a, at an early age my early for me I was in my early 20s so I was already I had already uh, experienced some things. I was in my early 20s, 22, 23. When I became Muslim, uh, I was very harsh with my parents. And I didn't know. And at the time, I was living with my parents. And I began, and harsh even with my non-Muslim friends. I cut off many people very quickly, thinking that this was the right thing to do, and that this was from Al-Wallah, al bara and this and that and the other. But there is a wisdom with how you deal with people. And the most important thing that you can leave with all of those people, and that I could have left with all of those, my ex-friends, ex-girlfriend, whatever, these kind of things, would have been Tawheed. Instead of worrying so much about, oh my gosh, you're trying to hug me now. And, 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 and so harsh and so... Uh, and I'm not saying to stay away from hugs is, is, is from the opposite sex is harsh, but what I'm saying is, is there's a hikmah in how you do these things. You take your shahada, the next minute you're trying to do this, and you haven't even explained tawheed. You haven't even given them any wisdom. You haven't shown them any manners. You, you know, I was trying to forbid pork and alcohol upon my parents. These kind of things, there was no wisdom in that, and it, the fruits were, uh, it was unfruitful. In fact, it scared many people away from Islam. And I didn't have other opportunities to call many of them to to to, hey, to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is our purpose in creation. I've not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. So, the maqsood, the purpose is, is to call the people to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to have the wisdom. You need to hold on to your religion. Do your best. There's plenty of material out there as far as study. Study from the free sources, free resources that you can find on the internet to ground yourself. Try to get around and find, there must be some good brothers to be around, to be around good companionship, to ground you and stay away from the ma'asi and the dhanub. Uh, also, prepare yourself for hijra. Hijra is not an easy thing, and it's getting more and more difficult with all the, the conflicts going on in the world, uh, the closed doors of many of the Muslim countries, the... 
Also, if you don't have anything to add to them, they don't want you. They don't care. They're not welcoming you, welcoming, welcoming you as if it was the time of the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين that you left Dar al to Dar al Islam. No, they're not welcoming you like that. You need now. You need something to be able to offer them in order to stay, or you will find more than likely much difficulty if you even are allowed to do so. And it all comes from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But in my experience and I have lots of it and I've met many muhajir muhajirin and uh, in Yemen in Egypt in Saudi Arabia and so many who were muhajir and then they're now they're not they went back to their lands or they had planned to stay for a long time and they've stayed and they left because of the great difficulty and other trials and tribulations they face with raising a family with children raising them in these lands is not as you always picture uh, and all the other difficulties and that these lands the bottom line is many of the lands they don't want you here so with that being said you need to prepare yourself if you're going to make hijrah or you're just going to come to study you need to prepare yourself for that finish your school that's going to give you at least a certificate to be able to maybe get into an Islamic University and from there you can build the other things and look to find a family get known to people and buy uh, find a family uh, number two get your finances together work uh, work the economy is halfway decent at least in some places in America you can find a job and uh, work and prepare yourself if you're truthful about this if you're truthful prepare yourself and as we know, the Prophet ﷺ said, "La tankati atoba, hatta la tankati al hijra, hatta tankati atoba, la tankati atoba, hatta tatlu shamsu min maghribiha." That uh, that uh, hijra does not cease until toba ceases, and toba does not cease until the sun rises from the west. So letting us know that uh, that it's open. Strive your best by striving. By making preparation, this is what Islam calls, calls us to do. Tawakkal ala Allah. What does tawakkal mean? From what I study with the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, the ulama say, A tawakkal ala Allah, huwa itimad ala Allah, wa fi'la asbab. That it is relying upon Allah, yes, and making effort, wa fi'la asbab. So if you want to marry, you don't sit in the masjid and just say, I just want to marry, you're just making dua, and you make no effort. You don't know, Allah may give it to you. But the point is, Islam encourages that we deal with real trials and tribulations and that real steps have to be taken to solve those trials and tribulations. You want a job, you can't sit in the masjid and just pray for it. Or just sit at home with the windows closed and think and just make dhikr and think that the job is going to come to you. Perhaps, you don't know, your risk is written for you, but more than likely, the sunnah of Allah is that you strive and you earn. And then you're able to do that. Likewise, you want to make hijrah, you have to strive and prepare for that. And the more you prepare, the, the easier in general it will be for you. And that is the best advice that I can offer. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.